couple of days ago, uh, we discovered that we actually had uh, a rear tire, the uh, passenger rear tire on the Honda was leaking. And the way I discovered it was my easy tire uh, pressure monitor here. And you, you have to believe it, not only with the absolute numbers, but kind of the changes uh, that are happening along the way. Uh, so what I noticed was that I was slowly losing uh, pressure. And uh, I got to the point where I didn't want to chance it anymore. I thought I'd have the tire removed to see what was wrong with it. And it turns out that there was a nail in it. So now the tire is fixed. And uh, yesterday, I noticed that this tire that was fixed was quite a bit more pressure than all of the other tires on the Honda. This is my rig, front axle, drive axle, tag axle, front axle of Honda, rear axle of Honda. And uh, I knew that because, uh, you know, they just filled it up and they're not as anal retentive. You know, they don't understand that you want this stuff to match. So I backed off a little bit on this yesterday, realizing that this tire was hotter than the other ones, and I kind of guessed. And what I wanted to show you is how you have to be patient with your tires and you have to work with them and you do have to know what the temperature of the tire is because if you don't know you're going to be chasing around all the time and you're going to have the different pressures on all the different tires and that's not good on your drive axle because you've got four tires that are all hooked together and you want them the same well lo and behold this morning this is the motorhome, this big box in the front. This is me sitting in the motorhome. Nice drive. Yeah, thanks, honey. And this is the Honda. Front axle, drive axle, tag axle, front axle Honda, rear axle Honda. You can see that the temperature, 55, 57 in the morning, 123, 123. My bogey in the front is 125, but I know very quickly I'll be at the temperature I need to be when I depart this morning. But here's what I wanted to show you. I had been patient enough and didn't screw around with my tires when the temperatures weren't all the same. Look at this drive axle. I effectively have them all right on the money. Wow. So as long as I've got in pressure that is logical in here, don't worry about the fact that they don't match because very rarely does it happen where you have such a perfect match in all your temperatures. Tag axle, 57, 59, perfect temperatures. Look at this Honda, 59, 59, 33, 33, 33, 33, 59, 59. This is a perfect tire day. Hopefully, yeah. the rest of the day will be a perfect tire day, but we're at least starting out. So one thing I think you should point out, it looks sunny out there, but when you did this, it was overcast. Yeah. So that might have helped with your yeah. temperatures. Yeah. Right. So once again, you got to get a TPMS. Tells you a lot. Saved us like about four, literally four or five times now. If we wouldn't have found that Honda uh, tire uh, leaking on us, we would have found out when we were on the freeway, and then it would be been even less convenient. You know? morning it's July 4th uh, 2021 you can see that I'm at the Gig Harbor Resort and this is a uh, Sun Resort and I can tell you that this is the way a resort should be run because when I had uh, some special issues that I needed some help with this place really stepped up. Uh, let me uh, show you how my fortunes changed at this place from how I first arrived. I had a little problem when I first drove in and I was wondering if this is how the rest of the stay was gonna be. So unbeknownst to Sue, right in back of me was a giant semi-sized dump truck that was just bearing down on me. And I never for an instant thought it would follow me inside this RV park. So I didn't care about it too much until I had to watch traffic, watch the pavement, read the signs, worry about who was in front of me 
any pedestrians, and lo and behold, this truck is pulling up alongside Arriving me. Arriving at Gig Harbor RV Resort on the left. So I pull up big, right in the middle. Yeah, big freaking truck in back of me is pulling right in here too. That's fine. Pull up right here, just right in the yeah. middle. Yeah. What does it say on the So page? I'm like, yikes. Sue can't see any of this because her right mirror doesn't it. show it. But all of a sudden, it's obvious that this truck is going to blow right by me. Now, I've got to have the Honda out of the roadway, so I've got to go forward enough to get out of the roadway, but stop short enough for the truck to get through. And as you can see, he barely makes it. Now, I'm sure he wanted me to back up, but I can't back up with the Honda. So I took the chance. Buddy, if you want to rip the front of the rig off, All right, let's have at off it. The, let's take off the thing right away so I can back up if I have to. Yeah. Can you hear me? In here, yeah. So we're going to go up this hill. Just check if I got a good swing clearance to come in there, because I'm a swinger, honey. Say that too loud. Wendy, I mean, there's a lot of big rigs back here. Ah, that's the calming voice of Sue telling me, hey, Mark, there's a lot of big rigs in here, no problem. The thing that she does when she does an advanced scouting, is she looks where the water is and the sewer, and she pretty much knows if we're going to be parking in back of the rig or in front of the rig by the time I get there. She looks at where the picnic table is, we'll get it out of the way, and if there's some big giant thing laying in the gravel, I'm sure she would pick it up. I have come to really rely on Sue, so much so that I don't like moving the rig without her. So when Sue and I first rode in, Sue stayed one day and visited my son. And then the very next day, I had to drive her to Seattle Tacoma Airport and she flew out to be with her mom. Her mom had a stroke and Sue wanted to be there and help her mom to get resettled in her new environment. And for the first two weeks, I was actually in site 16, which is in back of me. But I was not able to keep site 16. And in fact, I had a spot that was only one week here in the beginning and was going to move uh, with, uh, you know, not knowing Sue would be gone, we were going to move to a one-week spot at the fairground in Tacoma. And I don't know, it was like half an hour away or less. But when Sue left and went to Wisconsin, I decided that I did not want to be driving through Seattle <clears throat> traffic without her. So I pleaded with the people here at Gig Harbor and was able to snag the two weeks continuous in spot 16. What I didn't know was, I didn't know that that would continue and I in fact needed another week or a three week stay here and there was nothing to be had because as you can see, this place is busy in back of me because it's July 4th right now and I can pan around up the hill here is another complete campground and that one up there is completely full as well. So this is where I'm going to be parked for the next two days and I will be coming down this roadway here going past the garbage area here driving up that road and then I'm going to hug this silver Hyundai and back right past it and hopefully not sink into this filled-in swimming pool. All right. Power disconnected. GoPro in place. 
Depends underwear installed. The first thing you'll notice here is, hey Mark, what are you backing up for when you're going to go forward? Well, I can tell you that from the moment I was at this particular spot, I was always worried about what it was going to be like when I had to crank this frame and twist my whole motor home to go up this hill. And one of the comments I had if I left the cab audio in is I said, hey, that wasn't so bad. Um, it's the next turn that actually made me feel like I was going to tip over, even though it doesn't look like that at all in this video. Uh, it was an odd sensation being in there. Now, these roads typically are one way, but sometimes uh, they're both ways. And you can see the way these coaches are. On one side, you come out one direction. On the other side, you come out going the other way. So a lot of times you have to time how you're going to do this so you don't clog up traffic, especially if you have your toad connected on the back. Now, when I did this, the people in the office said they were going to send a person out to direct traffic to make sure things were clear for me. But something happened with miscommunication or they got busy last minute. So I was pretty much on my own. And once again, normally Sue would uh, handle all that with a walkie-talkie. You'll notice here on the right hand, my rear tire is going to go right across a culvert. And that was my bogey or my target because I didn't want to drive across that target because you'd be amazed at how heavy this rig is and how I can bend things. Where I stopped right there in the dirt, that's because I could feel the rig sinking. And I knew I had missed the swimming pool area, but I thought I'd wait a second for two to see if the sinking settled down. And fortunately, it did. So here's the favor Gig Harbor RV Resort did for me by allowing me to be in this staging spot because it's July 4th and they're full to wait for a spot to open up in two days. One of the things that I didn't pick up on right away uh, was <clears throat> I knew this was a swimming pool at one time, but what I didn't know was that it was a building that was next to the swimming pool. So when I started looking uh, very finely at the debris that was in this dirt, I started to see that there was all sorts of things here that could compromise my tires. Not the least of which is something like this rebar. What I did was I very carefully walked around and looked for any nails or anything that was in the way and I picked up those nails. In fact this morning one of the things that I did was I got on my hands and knees and of course with a Fifi and I re-inspected all of the area under the rig and pretty much only found a couple of nails. Now that's too too many but <clears throat> if I would have found 40 of them I would have been pretty confident that this might have been a stupid move coming in here. Here's a good shot that shows the tan small class A there. That's where I was for the first two weeks. And then in the distance, Miles is right next to the uh, check-in building. I'm there for two days. And then way in the distance where you see that person walking and turning, I'm going to be up there way in the back at a site. And that I'll move to, to tomorrow. I had a lot of obstacles for this pullout, even though it was straight. With the right hand side, I had to make sure I don't ride over that sewer cover or puncture with that 
impact bit that was stuck in the ground. So you can see in the process of doing that, I almost wipe out this silver uh, Toyota or whatever it is. But after I got over that calamity, you could see that what I had to do is follow the contour of this parking lot here so that I could swing the rear end around going back uphill. Now the real tough thing here was that once again I didn't have Sue directing traffic because that was normally a pretty busy area off to the right because that's where the dump station was and I kind of just got lucky here when everything was clear I literally just jumped in and heaved hoe and took off uh, so now you've got a quick get past the front office here because in a moment if somebody would pull in because it's such a short distance between the roadway and where you stop they could block me uh, once again that's something that Sue normally would clear uh, over the radio before I would uh, take it on. Now I lucked out here pulling into this uh, with it being as empty as it is. You can see that the Honda is there. I no sooner pulled in here and I went to visit my son and when I came back there was a fifth wheel that was parked about one inch over from the electrical post. I mean we were like kissing cousins for the remainder of the time we were there and there's no way I would have gotten the rig in by myself if that would have been there. Sue, I need you and I'm glad you're back. This morning when I woke up I was parked on the opposite far side of the building in the distance. You can see actually that there's a golf cart there with a pickup truck I was in back of the pickup truck and then in back of the building. I uh, drove up this roadway and I stuffed miles into this 30 amp spot, water only, no sewer. That'll be fine until Sue shows up. The uh, area, the dirt, the gravel, I checked as usual and it was way cleaner then the uh, debris area where I was parked, no fault of Gig Harbor. They actually did me a favor by being there. But just a pro tip, make sure you always check where you're going to be parking because guess what I found in this spot? <laughs> 